More now on Afghanistan. Canada's rescue operation is now back underway. But Prime Minister Trudeau, he is warning that Canada will not be able to fly out everyone on its rescue lists in the weeks ahead. Now, he calls it almost impossible. Now, that said, there is new urgency to the rescue operations. New report this morning are detailing reprisals and targeted killings by the Taliban. A report for the United Nations warns Taliban fighters are going door to door searching for Afghans who worked with NATO and threatening their countries, excuse me, their families. Uh, Af Amnesty International says Taliban fighters carried out a massacre of men who belonged to an ethnic group. That killing happened last month as the Taliban were capturing territory around Kabul. Well, for more, we're now joined by Obadullah Buhir. He is a lecturer at the American University of Afghanistan. He joins us right now in Kabul. So, Mr. Bahir, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Michael. I want to begin with what you're seeing on the streets right now, because from the images that we have been getting, we have seen everything, including protesters carrying the Afghan flag, women taking part of those protests, uh, the Talib saying they are not interfering. What do you make of what you're seeing? Well, there's quite a bit of disparity between what is being said and what is being done. And um, we saw in Kabul yesterday that during Independence Day celebrations, there were instances when the Taliban fighters uh, used force and they either hit people, arrested them for carrying the flag. There was also a scene where there was a flag hoisted on a bridge, uh, which a Talib fighter tried to remove and then people stood up to them. I guess most of it is because there is no clear communication from the leadership to the fighters on the ground as to what their stance is going to be with regard to the national flag. Uh, this is an important national issue that would have to be discussed as soon as a government is formed. Now, we are also, as you heard right off top, uh, seeing reports now of Taliban going door to door looking for people who worked for NATO forces or with the uh, previous Afghan government. How concerning is this? Again, this is another uh, version of the disparity as well, because we heard the Taliban leadership say that they were going to give amnesty, but there have been instances in which people have been taken away from their houses. Others have been executed or shot at. Um, the Taliban claim that that is people acting on their own, um, seeking vengeance for themselves on personal matters. Um, but with the security under the Taliban within Kabul, uh, the Taliban need to make sure that such instances do not happen, because even if it is uh, one or two instances or a few, uh, they are enough to shatter the trust that the people are already finding very hard to have in the promises that the Taliban are making. But please know that this cannot be a policy from the Taliban, because if it were a policy, we'd be hearing of much larger numbers of these inst instances. Half of Kabul used to work for the government at one point. So um, I guess whatever is happening is individual actors taking matters into their own hands. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier this week, I know you're driving around Kabul. Uh, you've been closer to your home for the last couple of days. Uh, talk to us about your decision to stay closer to home and what you've seen so far. Well, to be honest, uh, the first few days I had to get out and help a few friends. Uh, but with the airport situation the way that it is, it's very difficult to get people in. So I've asked my friends to lay low until matters are clearer. Um, but with regards to me staying uh, in as well, it was mostly because I had to sort out and do a lot of work indoors. Uh, again, we don't have jobs. The universities are shuttered, so there isn't much to do outside. But on the occasions that I did go outside, I got to interact with Taliban fighters on the street. They're heavily armed, um, but they're not really interfering in day-to-day -day life as such. If you act normal, if you look like just another person, no one really has much to say to you. Um, but if you are defying them in some way or the other, there are uh, repercussions for such actions. Now, we've seen many people uh, trying to rush to the airport in Kabul, trying to evacuate and get out. But you yourself, you're choosing to stay in Afghanistan. Uh, are you worried for your safety in the long run by staying there? Uh, no one really has any assurities for anything, considering the circumstances. It's just uh, there are quite a few things that go through my mind, um, as in the most important of which is that if all of us leave, they 
it really just creates a society that is um, an echo chamber of what the Taliban's vision for the world is. And I think this country will need people that can uh, help uh, steer it in the right direction. It will need uh, the youngsters that stay here that have no other option of leaving. will need educators like myself. And uh, that is why I, some of us have to stay and some of us have to uh, pay uh, or, or play their role in, in the transition that is coming. So what would you then like to see from Western governments like Canada right now? Uh, the process of immigration, though the numbers announced by most governments are large, but um, people don't really have access to that process to begin with. Uh, there are language barriers, there's lack of understanding, so maybe facilitation of that process. But most importantly, it's access to the airport. Uh, you could send in a thousand flights, but if people can't get into the airport, can't get on those flights, then there's no point. Uh, we understand that the Taliban said that they didn't want a brain bleed to happen uh, in the country and uh, brain drain. Um, but uh, that should be an option. That shouldn't be an obligation. They should give people the option of leaving since they are scared for their well-being. When they build a, tr a government, they build a rapport with people, uh, create some level of trust, people will come back to serve their country. These were already mostly people that were abroad. They came here to work for this country. Um, so yeah, just create a humanitarian corridor, let people be able to access the airport to get out because even those who have uh, visas, they want to leave, they can't leave because you've seen the scenes at the airport. So um, just, just engage with the Taliban, uh, figure out a mechanism to make this work. Obadullah Bahir, thank you for this. Appreciate it.